Welcome to the Texas Department of Transportation Houston District's virtual public hearing for the Interstate Highway 45 Galveston Improvement Project from the Galveston Causeway Bridge to 61st Street. This is a pre-recorded presentation. My name is Celeste Johnston. I am part of the consultant team working on this project on behalf of the Texas Department of Transportation, and I would like to welcome you and thank you for participating in this virtual public hearing. A public meeting was held for this project in August 2020. This hearing presentation is available for viewing starting on March 4th, 2021. During the virtual hearing, you may pause the presentation and navigate forward or backward using your video player. This virtual public hearing is being held to describe the proposed project, present the preferred alternative, and gather public input. This hearing is required under Texas Administrative Code Title 43, Chapter 2, Subchapter E, Rule 2.107 because of the addition of bicycle lanes as part of the proposed project, which is considered under the state code as a substantial change in function. In this presentation, I will describe the proposed project, provide an overview of the environmental studies being performed, explain the next steps in the project development process, and outline the methods for submitting comments. If you experience technical difficulties with the virtual public hearing, please call 713 802-5242. You may also request special accommodations, assistance accessing public hearing information and materials, and language interpretation needs other than English and Spanish. Please note, discussion with project staff will not be included in the official record of this public hearing. If members of the public wish to submit a comment to be part of the official record of this public hearing, they may do so in the ways outlined in the next slide. All verbal and written comments must be received or postmarked before the comment period closes on Friday, March 19, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. You can submit comments in the following ways. The email to hou-pio webmail at techstop.gov. The email to the TechStop Houston District Attention Advanced Project Development Director, P.O. Box 1386, Houston, Texas, 77251-1386 by calling 713-955-7814 and leaving a voicemail or online by visiting www.textdot.gov and searching in the upper right-hand search box for I-45 Galveston. Click on the email link at the bottom of the project page to open the comment form. Responses to comments received during the comment period will be included in the virtual public hearing summary report that will be posted on the project webpage approximately three months after the close of the comment period. The project webpage is www.textdot.gov, keyword search, I-45 Galveston. Given the unique circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic, along with the department's commitment to protecting public health during this national emergency, TxDOT is conducting this virtual public hearing to avoid in-person contact. At this time, an online public hearing is being conducted in lieu of an in-person public hearing. This presentation covers the same information that the Houston District would have presented at an in-person public hearing. All hearing materials can be found on TxDOT's project webpage on the I-45 Galveston Improvement Project hearing notice page. The webpage for this project is www.textdot.gov, keyword search, I-45 Galveston. The notice for this public hearing was published in the Galveston Daily News on Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Elected official letters were emailed on Friday, February 12th, 2021. Information was posted to the Textdot webpage on March 4th, 2021. Notices were mailed directly to adjacent property owners on Friday, February 12, 2021. Additional outreach for this virtual public hearing included posting notices at the Rosenberg Library, the Island Community Center, and local grocery stores. Notices advertising the virtual public hearing were emailed to the Galveston Chamber of Commerce and local churches that offer services in English and Spanish. The I-45 Galveston Improvement Project is receiving federal funds. And because of the federal component, TxDOT is required to assess the potential environmental effects of the proposed project in accordance with federal standards. The process that is followed is called the National Environmental Policy Act process, 
otherwise known as NEPA. The NEPA process provides analysis of the potential impacts to the natural and man-made environment and helps to inform the decision makers whether or not to proceed with the project. On December 9, 2019, TxDOT received a signed Memorandum of Understanding from the Federal Highway Administration that permits TxDOT to assume responsibility from the Federal Highway Administration for reviewing and approving certain assigned NEPA projects. This review and approval process applies to this project. The project study limits extend along I-45 from the Galveston Causeway Bridge to 61st Street, a distance of approximately 2.5 miles. The project is located in Galveston County. The project area consists of existing road right-of-way, developed land, and adjacent parcels of coastal marsh and open water. Land use surrounding the proposed project include industrial, residential, commercial, and vacant lots. This slide shows a timeline of the I-45 Galveston Improvement Project. The roadway design and environmental analysis for this project was initiated at the beginning of 2020. A virtual public meeting was held on August 11, 2020 to present the project to the public and solicit comments. Documentation of this public meeting can be found on the project webpage. Following the public meeting, TxDOT continued to refine the schematic and environmental analysis. This virtual public hearing is being held to present the proposed improvements and the findings of the environmental analysis and to receive your comments on the proposed project. The proposed project is needed because increased and projected growth in the area causes traffic demand to exceed capacity of the existing roadway. The current roadway layout creates operational issues such as congestion at the intersections and on the main lanes and access issues to adjacent neighborhoods. The facility currently has limited bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and for improved hurricane evacuation. The purpose of the proposed project is to improve mobility and reduce congestion by constructing additional lanes, ramps, and turn lanes. Improve traffic operations by bringing the roadway up to current design standards. Facilitate bicycle and pedestrian activity by upgrading bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and facilitate hurricane evacuation by providing additional lanes. Now let's talk about daily traffic volumes, what they are today, and what is projected for the future. By the year 2045, traffic volumes on I-45 from the Causeway Bridge to 61st Street are projected to grow by 45%. As you can see in this slide, traffic projections indicate congestion will increase along I-45 from the Causeway Bridge to 61st Street. Currently, approximately 76,000 vehicles a day travel through the project area. By 2045, this number is expected to increase to approximately 111,000 vehicles a day. With no improvements, the current capacity of I-45 from the Causeway Bridge to 61st Street would not be adequate to accommodate traffic volumes in 2045 causing increases in traffic congestion. The I-45 proposed improvements include reconstructing the main lanes to add one additional main lane in each direction for a total of eight main lanes, four in each direction. Reconstructing the frontage roads to add frontage road lanes in select locations for an average of four 11-foot wide travel lanes, two in each direction with auxiliary lanes. Adding a five-foot wide bike path along the frontage roads behind the curb adding a five-foot sidewalk along the frontage roads adjacent to the bike path, and reconstructing the existing stormwater collection system. The I-45 proposed improvements would also reconstruct the I-45 overpasses and add intersections improvements, including U-turn and turning lanes at the Harborside Drive, 71st Street, and 61st Street intersections, and construct a one-lane direct connector from northbound 61st Street to northbound I-45. The proposed improvements were designed to minimize impacts to natural or man-made resources while still meeting project goals. The schematic exhibits are located on the I-45 Galveston Island hearing page on text.gov. Information on how to access the hearing page on text.gov will be provided at the end of the presentation. Next, we will walk through the existing and proposed typical sections, how to read the schematics, and highlight three major areas of the schematics. The existing typical section, that is the existing roadway design, is a six-lane freeway with three 12-foot lanes in each direction, 10-foot inside shoulders, and 12-foot outside shoulders. 
The frontage road varies from two to three 12 foot lanes in each direction with curb, gutter, and storm sewer. There are no pedestrian or bicycle facilities along this portion of I-45. The existing right-of-way ranges from 216 to 400 feet wide. Two different typical sections are proposed for the project. The first proposed typical section is from the Galveston Causeway Bridge to 71st Street. The proposed design in this section includes an eight-lane freeway with four 12-foot lanes in each direction, six-foot inside shoulders, and 12-foot outside shoulders. The frontage road varies from two to three 11-foot lanes in each direction with curb, gutter, and storm sewer. A five-foot bike path and a five-foot sidewalk are proposed in each direction on the outside of the frontage roads. The proposed right-of-way for this section ranges from 250 to 415 feet wide. The second proposed typical section is from 71st Street to 61st Street and includes a six-lane freeway with three 12-foot lanes in each direction, six-foot inside shoulders, and 12-foot outside shoulders. Their frontage road varies between two and four 11-foot lanes with curb, gutter, and storm sewer, with a five-foot bike path and a five-foot sidewalk in each direction. The proposed right-of-way in this section ranges from 250 feet to 300 feet wide. The main lanes are reduced from eight lanes in the previous section to six lanes in this section. Here is a screenshot of a legend for the schematics you can find on the webpage. These legends are included on each page of the schematics, so you can reference it as you review the schematics. The screenshot on the right shows the colors that fill the proposed design. These colors identify the limits and major aspects of the project. Let's walk through them. The yellow color identifies the main travel lanes on I-45. The frontage roads are identified in light gray. In between the main lanes and frontage road lanes will be areas of blue, which are the entrance and exit ramps. Lastly, areas in dark orange color identify bridges, and small areas of dark gray are raised medians. The screenshot on the left shows the various types of lines that you will see. Of particular note are the black lines that outline the main lanes, the blue lines that outline frontage roads, the thin black dash lines that indicate existing right-of-way, and lastly, the thick black dash lines that indicate proposed right-of-way. Here's a detailed look at a portion of the schematic or design drawing of the project. This slide shows I-45 at the intersection with Harborside Drive and the proposed typical section of I-45 at a Harborside Drive. The intersection at ground level, as well as the overpass, would be rebuilt. The blue lines and gray coloring on the plan identify the frontage roads and Harborside Drive. U-turns would be added to the intersection, along with left turn lanes along the frontage roads. The typical section for this area is in the upper right corner of the slide. Notice that there is a slope on the elevated main lanes. In this view, the scale is exaggerated, but note there will be a consistent cross slope due to the curvature of I-45 at this location. We evaluated this intersection during the early stages of this project to help determine how many lanes were needed. Detailed traffic signal timing would be completed during final design. TxDOT worked closely with the City of Galveston during early stages of the project to help determine how many lanes were needed here and to ensure that the new design could accommodate heavy trucks known to frequent this intersection. Here is a detailed look of the schematic at 71st Street. The overpass at 71st Street would be rebuilt as well as the intersection at ground level. The rebuilt intersection would include U-turn lanes. Just like at Harborside Drive, each of the major intersections in this project were evaluated during the early stages of this project to help determine how many lanes were needed. Detailed traffic signal timing would be completed during final design. Here is a detailed look at the schematic at 61st Street. The overpass at 61st Street would be rebuilt as well as the intersection at ground level. In addition to ground level intersection improvements, in the lower half of the screen, you can see a travel lane in orange. This is called a direct connector. Vehicles would travel on an elevated lane over 61st Street and the frontage road straight onto I-45 northbound. This would allow vehicles to access I-45 northbound without stopping. This lane would also facilitate emergency evacuations. 
Now look at the lower right hand portion of the slide. Currently, there is a bypass located there where vehicles can travel from northbound 61st Street and connect to Broadway, avoiding the intersection. This is shown on the slide in a black hatched pattern. Due to the high number of crashes occurring at this merge point with Broadway, Techstar proposes to eliminate the bypass and add a right turn lane at the intersection. Although the project proposes to add a direct connector from 61st Street and remove the right turn bypass, the total number of lanes on 61st Street would not be reduced. These changes are proposed to improve the safety and operations of the intersection. This slide shows a tentative diagram of where the City of Galveston, TxDOT, and potential private property owners would install a dedicated pedestrian and bicycle route to provide continuous access around the I-45 and 61st Street area. The pink line is where TxDOT would include a bicycle path and a sidewalk as part of their proposed improvements adjacent to the frontage roads. The green dotted lines show potential pedestrian and bicycle routes that would be constructed by the City of Galveston or private property owners extending down 63rd Street and Avenue J. This project follows TxDOT and federal guidelines for providing pedestrian and bicycle facilities. TxDOT has been working with the City of Galveston and adjacent property owners to determine how to best fit bicycle and pedestrian facilities through the already developed area of 61st Street while minimizing impacts. The location of bicycle and pedestrian routes in the 61st Street area not proposed by TxDOT remain tentative. The proposed project is consistent with the Houston Galveston Area Council's 2045 Regional Transportation Plan for the eight county Houston Galveston region and the 2019 2022 Transportation Improvement Program. The proposed project will be funded with a combination of federal and state funds for a total of approximately 115 million. I will now discuss the environmental studies completed for the proposed project. The project team has evaluated the potential environmental impacts that could occur as a result of constructing the proposed improvements. Technical reports documenting the analysis and conclusions of these studies are available for review on the project webpage at www.text.gov, keyword search I-45 Galveston. As part of the project NEPA compliance, TxDOT considered biological resources, community impacts, water resources, hazardous materials, archaeological and historic resources, and park and recreational areas. The project was designed to avoid or minimize impacts to the greatest amount practicable. Overall, impacts to environmental resources as a result of the proposed project would be minimal. Areas that have been reviewed include cultural and natural resources, community impacts, environmental justice, floodplains, floodways, hazardous materials, and traffic noise. First, I will address archaeological resources. Coordination with the Archaeology Division at the Texas Historical Commission was conducted for the project. The Area of Potential Effects, APE, encompasses the limits of the existing right-of-way and proposed new right-of-way. No archaeological sites, known cemeteries, or other indicators of the presence of archaeological resources are within 150 feet of the project's APE. The area has largely been disturbed by modern construction of roadways and buildings. Work will occur primarily in existing disturbed right-of-way. It was determined that the proposed project would have no effect to archaeological historic properties. Next, I will discuss historic properties. Because new right-of-way may be needed along the existing roadway, the APE for the purposes of this review was determined to be 150 feet on either side of the roadways based on TxDOT guidance. Project historians surveyed the project APE on June 11, 2020 and identified 18 historic age resources built in or before 1977 on 16 properties. There are no National Register of Historic Places listed or previously determined eligible properties in the Project APE. Applying the National Register criteria for evaluation, project historians recommend that none of the surveyed properties are eligible for National Register of Historic Places listing. In compliance with the Antiquities Code of Texas and TxDOT's MOU with the State Historic Preservation Officer, TxDOT historians determine project activities have no potential for adverse effects on historic properties. Individual project coordination with a state historic preservation officer was not required. 
Next, I will discuss the biological resources study. Tier 1 and species analysis technical reports were completed for the project to identify any potential impacts to species or habitat. Qualified biologists determined through field and desktop evaluation that no federal or state listed threatened or endangered species would be impacted by this project. Additionally, the species of greatest conservation need were analyzed for potential impacts from the project. The project is within range of and contains suitable habitat for eight species of greatest conservation need. The proposed project may impact, but is not likely to impact these species. While there are endangered species in critical habitat in Galveston County, the project area is urban and developed in nature. No adverse impacts to species or habitat are anticipated. Next, I will discuss community impacts. There are no anticipated adverse community impacts associated with the proposed project. Minority and low-income populations are present adjacent to the proposed project. The project is anticipated to result in three commercial displacements, which will be discussed later in this presentation. None of the displaced businesses specifically serve minority or low-income populations. In addition, there are comparable properties to which they could relocate if desired, and there are other businesses providing the same goods and services elsewhere nearby. Changes to access and travel patterns would be beneficial as the proposed project would improve access to I-45 from northbound 61st Street via a new direct connector, eliminate left turns at signalized intersections for vehicles making U-turns at Harborside Drive and 71st Street, and improve pedestrian access to businesses along I-45 by providing sidewalks. The project is not anticipated to impact community cohesion. Limited English proficiency persons were provided and will continue to be provided the opportunity for meaningful involvement in the NEPA process for the proposed project. Overall, the proposed design features would enhance mobility and access and would reduce congestion and improve safety for both minority and non-minority persons. Next, I will discuss hazardous materials. A hazardous materials initial site assessment also known as a HAZMAT ISA, was performed to determine the potential for encountering hazardous substances and or contamination within the vicinity of the project. The HAZMAT ISA identified seven sites that may be of environmental concern. Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, TCEQ, file reviews were conducted for the sites. The file reviews resolved four of the sites. Additional investigation is being conducted for three sites, the City of Galveston Old Municipal Incinerator, Broadway Chevron, and ExxonMobil, which is currently a Texaco gas station. If unanticipated hazardous materials are encountered during construction, TxDOT and or the contractor would be notified, and steps would be taken to protect personnel and the environment. Any unanticipated hazardous materials encountered during construction would be handled according to applicable federal, state, and local regulations per TxDOT standard specifications. Slide 31. Next, I will discuss the traffic noise analysis. A traffic noise analysis was conducted in accordance with state and federal guidelines to determine if the project would result in a traffic noise impact. Based on the analysis, eight receivers are expected to be impacted by noise. A receiver is a specific outdoor location where frequent human activity occurs. Noise abatement options were considered for these receivers in accordance with TxDOT and FHWA criteria. It was determined that noise barriers would not be feasible and reasonable for seven of the impacted noise receivers. A noise barrier would be feasible and reasonable for one impacted receiver. A noise barrier is proposed at Jamail Bay Park adjacent to 61st Street. The location of the proposed barrier is shown on the figure in green along 61st Street. The final decision to construct the proposed noise barrier will not be made until completion of the project design, utility evaluation, and polling of all benefited and adjacent property owners and residents. Next, I will discuss water resources. There are wetlands and waters of the U.S. located within the project area, and they may potentially be impacted by the project. Any identified impacts will be authorized under a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers individual permit. 
The entire project is located within the 100-year floodplain. This concludes the discussion on the potential environmental impacts. Approximately 2.8 acres of additional right-of-way would be required for the proposed project, and it would potentially displace three commercial structures. No residential displacements are anticipated. TxDOT offers relocation counseling and financial assistance to residences and businesses that are displaced by the acquisition of highway right-of-way in accordance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisitions Policies Act of 1970. TxDOT would provide assistance to potentially displaced businesses. The three potentially displaced commercial structures are shown on this figure and include National Tire and Battery, Texaco, and a strip center with one tenant. Potential displacements would be confirmed during final design. Information about the TxDOT Relocation Assistance Program concerning services and benefits for displaced persons and businesses can be found on the TxDOT website at https colon forward slash forward slash www dot tx dot gov forward slash government forward slash processes dash procedures forward slash row dot html. We want to highlight the estimated project timeline. Look for the pink We Are Here arrow at the bottom left of the slide. This virtual public hearing is being held to present the proposed project and associated environmental technical reports and gather public and stakeholder input. After the comment period closes, TxDOT will review the comments received and prepare a virtual public hearing summary report. The summary report will be posted to the project webpage approximately three months after the close of the comment period. The next steps include refining the schematic and finalizing the environmental documentation. Provided the environmental documents and process are approved, the project would move into detailed design and right-of-way acquisition could begin. Construction is programmed to begin in 2023. The project team anticipates that construction would take approximately three to four years. The project webpage contains all materials presented in this virtual public hearing, including this presentation in both English and Spanish, exhibit boards, a comment card, a project back sheet, the schematic, and the environmental technical reports. The schematic layout provides a more in-depth look at the details such as the grade separations, the direct connector, and the existing and proposed right-of-way. These files are large and may require more time to download than the other project materials. TxDOT encourages you to review the materials posted on the Virtual Public Hearing webpage and to provide written comments. The comment form is located on the hearing webpage. Comments must be received via email, phone, or mailed and postmarked by Friday, March 19, 2021 to be included in the official Virtual Public Hearing Summary Report. You can submit comments in the following ways. Via email to hou-piowebmail at text.gov, via mail to the TxDOT Houston District Attention Advanced Project Development Director, P.O. Box 1386, Houston, Texas 77251-1386, by calling 713-955-7814 and leaving a voicemail, online by visiting www.textot.gov and searching in the upper right-hand search box for I-45 Galveston. Click on the email link on the bottom of the project page to open the comment form. Again, responses to comments received during the comment period will be included in the virtual public hearing summary report that will be posted to the project webpage approximately three months after the close of the comment period. The project webpage is www.textot.gov, keyword search, I-45 Galveston. Secondly, don't hesitate to contact us with any questions. Please feel free to contact Derek Frejia at the Houston District Office at 713-802-5242 or Jamal Alahi at the Galveston Area Office at 409-978-2500 at any time during the project development process to ask questions. And don't forget to click on these links and follow us on Twitter for ongoing road closures and construction updates on the Houston District Twitter page. 
You can also keep up with TxDOT News on our Facebook page. Thank you for participating in this virtual public hearing.